Hello everyone, welcome to Find It, Fix It, Flip It, episode number 5. This is a series where I attempt to find broken items, fix them, and then flip them for profit. And I do want to say that it's going very, very well so far. So if you watched any of the last episodes, you'd have seen some of the things which I've purchased and sold. And unfortunately, so far, it's been limited pretty much to just consoles because there's not really been a lot of faulty items going at a decent price. That is until now, because now we have something a little bit different. So I have a couple of consoles to work on, but I also have a MacBook. It's an i1466 MacBook Air, and apparently it's water damage. So it's going to be quite fun to get into these repairs. But before we do that, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor. Find It, Fix It, Flip It is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay is the all-in-one solution for custom printed circuit boards, flexible printed circuit boards, advanced printed circuit boards, and even CNC and 3D printing. To get started, simply head over to PCBWay.com, click on Instant Quote, and submit your PCB details. Click on Save to Cart, and then we can upload a Gerber file. Click Submit Order now, and your next project is then sent for review. PCBWay also offer a shared project page where you can share your projects or find something to create. Simply head over to the link in the video description to learn more or to start your next project. Now back to the video. Right, so here I have the spreadsheet of everything which I've done. I'm not going to go through all of this, but if you want to pause the video and just read everything, I'll break it down on what all of this means. So if we take a look here, we had a £100 starting budget, and I added that to the items list because I wanted to count it as a plus balance. So we've got the price of what an item cost, we've got the date it was purchased on, some of the dates I forget, and basically I can't really figure out what day I buy them. But basically, we've got the purchased on, the purchased from, so they'll tell us where we bought it from. So, for example, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Friends, uh, or if you come with another item, like these two controllers here, which I still haven't got around to fixing. I promise I will get around to fixing them. We also have the sold on, to tell us where the item was sold. And we also have the cost of parts and the totals. So if we take a look down here, we have quite a few items from previous episodes. But then if we take a look from here, we've got a MacBook A1466, which I purchased for £80.45 from eBay on the 16th of October. I also sold the Xbox One X 1TB for £160 with a Series X controller. In total, that come to £43 in parts, £23, which is what it cost me for the controller. I bought those as a separate lot and I've been putting them with different consoles. And £20 for a hard drive. I can't count the retimer that I put on there from the last job because it wasn't the cause of the issue. And the old retimer got used on another job, so I'm not going to count that as a parts cost. The Xbox One X controller, I still haven't got around to fixing. I will get around to that, so I've actually got a few controllers now to fix. But basically, we also bought a Xbox One S White Disc Edition for £51. I also bought an Xbox One 1708 controller, that's the Xbox One X and S controllers, for £8.17, not a bad price, and a Nintendo Switch for £65.04 in total. If we take a look here, I've got a few parts which are available if I need them. I've also got the totals here, so if you take a look at the formula here, we've got B2 to B27. So that highlights all of these and it tallies everything up. So it tallies up the £100 starting budget and then adds up the minuses, adds up the pluses and gives us a total there. This one here will tally up all of the F3 to F27, so all of this. And that will give me a total there. And then this one here is a total sum of this row, so row 29. And that does adjust based on when I move it. So the total amount that we had after all of this if we don't include parts was 103 pounds 32 that's 32 pence profit 
but we had £96.05 in total in parts and fees costs on eBay. So fees costs I've worked out based on what eBay charged me when I'm listing and selling things. And the grand total means we've got a whopping £7.27 in the bank. So that's the breakdown is done. Let's get into some repairs. So if you watched the last episode, you will have seen that I paid for a few items on eBay, which I won on auctions. The first of which is a Xbox One S controller with the original back, which is awesome because that means I can sell that as a working complete controller if I can get it to work. I will put a screenshot of the listing up so as you can see that, but basically that didn't cost much at all and it should be a nice easy profit in terms of the fact that I'll probably put it with the console. If not, I can always sell it on its own. I'll probably get about £30 for it. So once I've accounted for parts and things, I'll probably close the trip on my money. I also have a Nintendo Switch, and it didn't say this in the listing, but the serial number for this is XIJ40002, which means it's an exploitable console. Should go for a little bit more if we get it working. I also have an item which I've been really looking forward to working on, a MacBook Air. This is the A1466 model, and they're pretty reliable in terms of fixability. The A1466 was probably one of the best MacBooks that Apple ever made, and I never thought I'd actually say that because I hate Apple. I hate them as a company, but I do like this A1466, and every A1466 I've ever worked on, I've fixed, which is obviously a good track record. So fingers crossed on that one that we're going to be able to get that working, and that should retail for around about 200 to 250 pounds. I will need to buy a MagSafe for it, so I'll need to buy a charger, but I can deal with that once I get it working. Hopefully, if I get it working, but if not, then I know I can get at least 50 to 60 pound for the screen, and then there are gonna be other parts in there which I can sell as well. The final item which came is a Xbox One S. I'm gonna try and put that with this controller if I can get it working, and I should get around about 150 pound for it, or 175 on eBay, but there will be some fees if I do sell it on eBay. Hopefully I can fix it really cheap, and hopefully I can sell it as high as I possibly can. So let's get into some fixes, shall we? So I've got a nice pile of items here. So what shall we work on first? Let's go with the simplest first. Let's go with the Xbox One S controller. And we'll see what the issue is with that. And hopefully get it fixed. So according to this, it doesn't work on batteries. So I'm going to take out the screws and then I'll try and pair it on just to see what's going on with it. And I can already see an issue. There's a battery terminal missing there. It's probably been crushed behind the case. So I wonder if that's what the cause is. There we go. Okay, so yeah. The terminal here is bent back, which is fairly common. I see that quite often, actually. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get this screw out so it's not in my way. This is why I don't like tearing the sticker. Number one, it looks ugly. And number two, it makes it difficult to get the screw in and out. But I'm just going to reline that up. I'm going to leave it unscrewed. I'm going to get some batteries and I'll try and get this thing to turn on with batteries. Okay, so I've just stole one of the kids' battery packs just to see if I can get this thing to work. So let's just pop in that there. And... Huh. It turns on. Well, what do you know? Okay, so I'm going to just see if I can pick it up using Bluetooth. And there we go, it does pick up. Let me switch over to the desktop. Okay, so I'm going to load up Game Controller Tester. And as you can see, it's picking up a controller there. And yep, the widget menu works. All right, so I'm going to test the buttons. Uh, okay, we do have some drift on the left analog like it did mention in the listing. Yeah, that's a little bit foobard. Yeah, and the button doesn't work either. The, uh, is it LS they call it? I'm not sure. The click button's not working. Okay, so the click button doesn't work and we've got a drift issue. So the issue with the not connecting through wireless, evidently that was just down to the batteries. But I will give it a full test on a console as well. But that's absolutely fine. That does me absolutely nicely. So I need to get the left analog fixed, which is going to be this one just here. 
Okay, so first thing I'm going to need to do is just desolder the old analog. So I'm going to add some flux around here. Um, just about to use the last bit of flux out of my tube. So I'm going to have to grab another one. And uh, what I'll do is just replace the solder that's on here with some fresh leaded solder and lower the melting temperature on the joints. So this is just going to help me to desolder the old analog stick. Okay, and next I'm going to just wick the old solder away using some solder braid. So this is basically just a copper braid and it's going to suck up the solder and allow me to remove the connector. Okay, this should just pop right off if I've managed to get all of the solder. No, I haven't. There's just a little bit left, just here. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so this should just pop right off now. So we turn it around. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to grab a brand new analog from out of my bag. I buy these in packs of fifty. I don't generally fix controllers for customers, but that's just because they're not viable to fix in terms of a job. So what I do is I just buy analogs to be able to fix my own controllers or the ones that I'm selling with consoles. I'll just pop that in there and now I just need to basically solder it on. Perfect. Okay, time to clean up. Get rid of this flux. I'm just using isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush just to clean the motherboard up. Well, this is actually the daughter board. This is on the secondary board, not the main board. So I'll just literally dip my toothbrush into the isopropyl alcohol and then I can just scrub around and make sure it's nice and clean before it goes back in because otherwise flux is going to end up sticking to the board and also it will end up inside the analog and we'll have exactly the same issue that we've got right now so let's get this back together and we'll give it a test okay here we go so let's connect it back up to the computer and we'll see what goes on with it shall we okay there we go And it clicks as well. Absolutely perfect. Let's test the rest of the buttons. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. One fixed fully working, fully functional controller. I will make sure that the headphone jack works, but I'm pretty sure it will. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to test that right now. I need to put that up to my Xbox to make sure that it's gonna work, but it should be fine. Next up, we have a Nintendo Switch, and apparently this has got no power. So hopefully it's gonna be a relatively straightforward job. A bit of flux on my bench there. But hopefully it's gonna be a relatively straightforward job. Nintendo Switches with no power are generally straightforward but that can be tricky sometimes. It all depends what's actually going on inside, whether it's water damaged or whether it's just a simple IC which has blown, which is usually the case. Let's plug in a charger. Let's see if anything happens. And it doesn't appear so. Okay. Nothing happens there. I will leave that plugged in for a little while while I'm disassembling it. But for now, let's get it open. Okay, so I'm already seeing liquid damage here, so we've definitely got some damage. Okay. 
Yeah, so the battery is definitely liquid damaged. And I'll see some liquid around this area here, which is the battery charging circuit. So let's unplug that. Okay, let's get the board out, shall we? Okay, here we go. So let's take a quick look. So I'll see some signs of liquid being around here. We got some liquid here, tiny bit there, but most of it is on this side. Um, we've got some liquid around M92T36. BQ24193 around by the SD connector, the LCD connector, and also around by the digitizer and the SD card, or rather the game card connector. Quite a bit of damage here. Let's have a look underneath the NAND. That looks fine. Okay, quite a bit of damage. But can we get this working? So let's pop under the microscope and I'll see if I can figure out roughly what is wrong with it. Okay, so issue number one is going to be the fact that we've got corrosion around this chip here. Like I said, this is the BQ24193. It's responsible for basically charging the battery. Also, some issues around M92T36. That's not going to be making a good contact. Could just get away with reflowing that, maybe. That is not good at all. That there is not good at all. We've got some issues around this Max IC, which is a CPU power management chip. And having corrosion there could be bad news. We've got some corrosion around the display area. So this is the display driver here. And also corrosion around the LCD connector as well. Probably going to have to replace that. In fact, I would say most definitely. Issues around the power button and the fan. And also around here as well. This is the digitizer and the game card reader connector. Some issues around the fuel gauge IC. This tells the system how much charge the battery's got. A few issues around the audio IC. A little bit more corrosion up here. This is by the security chip. Um, that's basically the anti-piracy IC. And also corrosion around here as well. I believe this is linked to the backlight, I think, or I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's a backlight driver. Either that one or this one here is the backlight driver, but they've both got corrosion on, so it's going to have some issues. Right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to check if it's going to be worth my time. So there's a little capacitor here, and that's basically going to tell me if the CPU is dead or not. Hopefully not, because if it's not dead, then it might be fixable. So with my multimeter in continuity mode, I've got one probe on ground. And we don't have a dead CPU. Good. Let's test some more capacitors around here. Okay, there's no blown capacitors there. How about the fuse? The fuse is good. How about this coil? The coil is good. How about this area here? This is the charging circuit. That's good too. Or in terms of shorts anyway. Okay, so the first thing I think I want to do then is I want to give a couple of these areas a light reflow just to try and get a good contact. And then I'm going to ultrasonic the board. So I'm going to clean the board fully and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so I'm going to apply a little bit of flux here. And I'm going to set my hot air to 420 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. And I'm going to reflow this chip just to freshen up those joints and we'll see how it looks afterwards.
Okay, so that's that one done. Let's do the same with this one. And protect that connector with a metal shield. I'll add some more flux. And that might need replacing, to be honest. That looks like an awful lot of damage in that area. Okay, that's reflowed. So, the ultrasonic cleaner should actually clean underneath. And we still melted that connector, even though I was trying to protect it. That's the problem with working around plastic connectors. All right, let's try and sort out up here. So I'm going to actually clean this bit first. Okay. They flowed. And I don't think this area is going to need reflowing. I think it just needs an ultrasonic clean. Same with this here. And, and I will reflow this because this looks a little bit rough. So you might think, why am I sitting here reflowing chips? Well, the reason for that is purely because most of the time, a lot of the liquid damage is just down to corrosion underneath the chip. Um, reflowing it will help to break up that corrosion and then the ultrasonic cleaner will get rid of it completely. There we go, it doesn't take long. Um, this here I do need to be real careful. Simple reason, there's a plastic connector right next to it. So let's just clean this up. And we'll see how it looks once I've done it. Let's close that catch so as we don't break it. The liquid damage indicators come off. Okay, and that actually doesn't look that bad now. That actually looks pretty good. So, time for the ultrasonic cleaner. And then we'll re-evaluate it once it's out of the cleaner. So just off to the side here, you can see I've got an ultrasonic cleaner and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this in. I'm also going to drop the NAND in there as well, just for good measure. Um, I'm going to give it around about 20 minutes to clean. Um, you might think that seems like a long time, but the ultrasonic cleaner does need to heat up as well. I am going to clean off this thermal paste using a cotton swab first, but ultimately I need to put it into the machine and give it a really, really good clean because there's very likely going to be corrosion underneath the BGA chips. So fingers crossed when it does come back out of the cleaner, it's going to work. But if it doesn't, then we'll re-evaluate and I'll take it from there. So there you go. There's the thermal paste off and ready to go in the cleaner. So obviously I can't do anything while that's running. It's really, really loud and I can't even hear myself think. So I'm going to leave that running. I'm going to go grab a cup of coffee because that is ultimately the most important tool in any workshop. So I'll resume the video when that is clean. Right, so this is out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I do need to give it a little bit of a warm up just to finish drying it off. I have blasted it with air, which I usually do. So my process for cleaning is basically, I'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and then I'll put it onto the BGA machine behind me just to warm it up. And then I'll blast it with air as well. Or rather the other way around, I'll blast it with air and then put it on the BGA machine. But these are too small for that because the BGA machine gets very hot and these boards are really thin. So I don't like to use them on this. I usually leave them for 24 hours to basically dry off naturally, which is why there's a few boards down there by the ultrasonic. Um, camera going all weird. But I usually leave them to dry off naturally, but I want to get this done now. So... I'm going to heat it up with the hot air and dry it off fully. Okay, so let's just get the nozzle off my hot air. And I'm just going to go around and heat it up. I don't want to keep hot air in one location for too long because there's plastic connectors and things. I don't want to damage those.
Alright, well, let's just go ahead and give it a quick test then. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook this up out of the case. And I'm going to basically hook it up to my bench power supply, which is providing 4.2 volts. And that's going to give me a fully charged battery. And then I'm going to prompt it to boot using the USB cable. And I'm going to see what kind of current gets drawn and see if it basically starts to turn on. Okay, we've got 203 milliamps of current draw. 400 milliamps of current draw, 5. It's going up. I saw 700 milliamps. That is booting. Awesome. That is booting. Okay, so let's get it inside the housing and we'll see if we get any kind of display, any kind of backlight, anything like that. We'll see what happens. I've got a feeling that LCD is not going to work, but I was just actually talking to Wayne from Wayne's New Repair UK, link in the video description. And basically, I've got a buyer for a motherboard. So if I can get just the motherboard working, I've got a buyer for a motherboard at £80. And that's more than I pay for the console. So. If I can get just the board working and it's going to need too much in parts, then I can just sell the board. So I've just activated the bench power supply cable with this board here. This is one of my own boards. And basically, sometimes these will go into sleep mode. So I've just reactivated that, made sure that it's going to be active and working. Let's see if it wants to turn on and boot. Yes, it does. So let's just see if we get any kind of a display or backlight. We do. Okay, but we don't get a display. It's turning on, but we just don't get a display. So now the question remains, is it the display or is it the display driver? So I'm going to need to verify that. But it is definitely... Uh, we do get a display. Yeah, there's a green line. I think the display's gone. Okay, let's pop this into a new housing. Okay, so if the display's gone, that's fine because I do have a buyer for one of these boards. So if I can verify that everything works, in terms of the board itself so let's say for example it connects to the internet it works on a game uh, it loads an SD card and things like that so if I can verify that everything works I don't think it's going to be worth me fixing the screen genuinely it's going to cost me £25 for a screen and then there's a time to, the time to fix it and all of the other stuff I don't think it will be worth fixing it if the screen is gone especially considering we've got some liquid damage on the SD card connector as well on the game card connector as well so i've got a non-good screen here this screen definitely works this is from another console that i bought off ebay and basically this is well this was another liquid damage one but the screen itself works perfect the board actually works it's just got a slight issue with joy cons but if i can just verify that everything works and that it's going to connect to joy cons and stuff then you know i can sell the board for £80. So I'll get this connected up and then we'll take it from there. Alright, so given the amount of liquid damage on the game card reader, I'm going to be using a different one for tests because it's very unlikely it's going to work. I might try and fix it in a later video though, but they only cost about £20 to buy, so it's not really worth fixing. But if I can fix it just by cleaning up some of the corrosion later on down the line then I might be able to sell it and make a little bit of money. And in fact, they do always come in handy to me, so I'd probably buy it from myself. Because game card readers, to me, are like gold dust. Whoops. Turn it on. We get a backlight. We get no display. <laughs> oh, no! All right. So that could be the LCD connector, or it could be the backlight driver. So I'll put this to one side for now. It does turn on, so it is going to be fixable. But I'm going to put it to one side for now. I want to look at the Xbox and just see what we're dealing with with the Xbox. 
Let's at least try and fix something fully. But that could just be down to the LCD connector. But the LCD on the console, or rather on the housing here, it's definitely faulty. It's got a green line on it. So it's definitely going to be faulty. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. But I think the board is fixable. And it's probably going to be something I'm going to have to do off camera because obviously I've got limited time on these videos. I can't have the videos running for longer than an hour. So I'll look at it off camera and then basically just do updates on it. Next up, I've got the Xbox. So this is exactly how this comes. So it should be quite interesting. Hopefully we can get it working and be able to reset it with the controller to make a little bit of money. So this is exactly how it turned up. What I'm going to do first of all, because I know someone's messed inside here, I'm going to just take out the green screws so I can have a look and make sure everything is connected up inside. I also need to make sure that the heatsink is connected, but it is screwed in, so it should be okay in terms of keeping the system cool to try and turn it on. So the screw's missing for a start, but I do have a full set of screws from episode two. Okay, we've got a one terabyte hard drive, that's cool. Let's just see if the power supply is connected up fully. It is. Let's try and turn it on. Let's see what happens. Ah, I know what's wrong with you. For a start, the power button is damaged. Yep, the power button is damaged. Okay, let's get a replacement front panel. We have a replacement front panel from episode two. There we go. Pop in a new one. Doesn't really matter which one I use. I've got one lying around from another console, but it doesn't really matter because I know that the front panel from the first one works. Boom. Ah, okay. Ah, okay, right, I've got ya. Believe the fan controller is broken because the included fan doesn't spin, but when it's plugged into the fully working Xbox, it does. Right, that's why this has been opened. Now I remember. It's not going to cost us anything because we've already got the part available. Let's get the rest of the console disassembled. Okay, so apparently the fan controller is not working, so it's not spinning the fan up apparently. So let's just see if we can replicate that issue. So I'm going to put the heatsink back on, and I'm not going to I'm not going to be reapplying the thermal paste. Actually, I'll pop a tiny bit on, I suppose, but I'm not going to fully reapply it while I'm working on the device. So let's just pop a little bit of thermal paste on just to keep it cool. And let's actually put the heatsink on so it doesn't overheat. That was pretty annoying to see, to be honest. The fact that it's been sent to me in that condition. That it's pretty annoying. I uh, will be reflecting that in the feedback of the seller because that was an unacceptable condition. If I've taken it apart, I should have put it back together. At least enough for me to be able to pair it on upon arrival. And I didn't do that. Okay, so there's the heatsink on. Let's pop in the power supply. I'm not really concerned about the disk drive at the moment. I just want enough to be able to test it. There's the working front panel. Is that turning on? Okay, that's not... Is 
Yeah, that's not turning on. That's not a fan controller issue at all. It's not as described. This is not. This is a beep on beep off. It's not a fan controller issue. I believe I might know why. Yep. Yep. That is a beep on beep off. That's a RAM issue. That's a RAM issue. It's not a fan issue. This is going to suck. That is not a fan issue. That is a RAM issue. That's pretty annoying. I'm not going to lie, that is fairly annoying because it's not as described again. And I am so, so fed up. Okay, we've got trace damage on the HDMI port. That's not been noted. That we've had prior repairs. Wait, does my power supply not work? I don't think my power supply works. Now to beep on beep off is not it's not an issue fan. Now to beep on beep off is not a fan issue. That's pretty annoying. Alright, well, the first thing I want to inspect here is number one. How is this HDMI port looking? Wow, that is a pretty shocking job. That's a pretty shocking job. <laughs> I'm not going to lie there. That is pretty rough. The HDMI V timer looks fine. All right, let's get the heatsink back off then. We're going to need to try and figure out what's going on with this. So it's not going to be anything to do with the fan. It wouldn't power off, it would stay on at least for a while. So let's hunt around, let's see if I can find any standby voltages around here. So I'm going to run across the board, see if I can find anything and uh, see what we can do from there. Okay, the APU isn't getting hot. I have to be burning my finger right now, and it's not. So I can't see any reason why the board will be turning off. Or at least upon initial inspection. So I'm going to hunt around with the microscope and uh, I'll report back when I figure something out. Okay, one thing I'm noticing there are spots on this RAM here. So I'm finding spots here. I don't know if that's thermal paste that's just splashed over or whether it's something more severe. But this RAM I see here, there is a little spot on there. And also that one there. So I think it is actually liquid. And also on the other ones as well. Oh. 
Yeah, I think this ram is liquid damaged. Wait, what the hell? This is not factory joints. That's been replaced. Okay, this is getting more annoying by the second. That's been replaced. That NCP4205. That's not factory. This is all prior repair attempt. Okay, well, this is going to be annoying because I believe this has been liquid damaged and there's prior repair attempts on this. So this side seems fine. All around here seems absolutely fine, right? But then if we look over the other side, we are starting to see spots, which is evident of some sort of liquid being spilt on this, maybe milk or something. This could be a rabbit hole. I'm going to be contacting the seller on this because none of this has been declared. This has been worked on by someone. Um, they look, it looks like they've reflowed a lot of things. Uh, yeah, this is really annoying, to be honest. I'm going to be contacting the seller. I'll pause the video and uh, I'll resume once I've contacted the seller because I'm not happy about this at all. Right, ladies and gents. Okay, so another thing I've noticed to bad hard drive. This seller is a scammer. And I can only assume they knew about it because they sell Xbox parts. So this drive is bad. It's not showing up in my computer at all. So it is beeping to say that it's on. So I'll unplug that. Hear that ding? So it's taking absolutely forever to come up. And then when it does come up, when I unplug it, it's coming up with a beep. So here's the serial number, uh, WL15K5NK, and if you take a look on here, WL15K5NK, that is a bad drive, this seller is a scammer. They've literally thrown together a console here, they've thrown together parts, that is literally what they've done, and that is that would explain exactly why it's turned up as it's turned up like this. I'm going to be returning this. I'm not going to be accepting this. And this is one of the good things about filming everything. The fact that it was sold as faulty does not make a slight bit of difference. Okay? It does not make a blind bit of difference. This has been literally thrown together, which would explain the shoddy work on the HDMI traces. They've made it look like they've, it's just a pro repair attempt. They've thrown components back on here. and I'm not going to be accepting it at all. So, if I put this back on, that drive is bad, right? If the drive was bad, we would get a 30 second and then off. If that was the cause. So, I'm going to pop this back on here. Right. Pop that back on there like that. Pop in a power supply. And if it was the drive what was causing the power on, power off issue, then this should... Theoretically, turn on now and it should stay on. It can cause a random power issue if it's pulling down the power to ground. It can cause that kind of issue. But even, even the front panel, I can't even use the front panel. This is a complete and utter scam. I can't even use the front panel. That's not going to turn on. It's a beep on beep off. It is a donor board. That is literally it. It's a donor board. It's literally been thrown together from parts. So I'm going to be returning this. Um, I'm pretty annoyed. I really am annoyed. I'm going to be returning it. I will pause the video again. And I'll resume this video. I've got till next week to edit this video. But I'll resume the video when I've had an update on this specific console. Right then, ladies and gents. So, it's been a little while since I uploaded this video. I opened a dispute on eBay about the Xbox One S because that was clearly a donor board. And it was clearly thrown together in a bid to 
try and fob off some crap. The seller very obviously would have known about it and there was a few things which he said in the dispute which made me think that he definitely knew about it. Number one was the fact that he, said, he basically said, well, it's not on me to determine all of the faults, that's on you, blah, blah, blah. With my response being, well, no, it's on you, regardless of whether it's sold as faulty, you should list the faults and you should list that there's prior repair attempts on it. Uh, I mean, let's be real, there was flux all over the board. There were several indicators that the board had been messed with. Now, one thing I will say is it's not on the buyer to have to determine what the faults are. The seller is responsible for providing an accurate listing, whether or not it's sold as faulty. Even if it's sold as faulty, if it's not as described, if, if nothing's been declared in the listing, it's on the seller. And eBay awarded it in my favour. So they've awarded me the refund. I've sent the item back. He would have received that yesterday. So I'm waiting for eBay to refund me. So I will get the money back on that. And basically, that's going to be the end of that matter. So another update is the Nintendo Switch that I worked on earlier on. That actually works, or the board works anyway. Now, obviously, the screen and things don't work, which wouldn't make it viable to actually put a new screen in it and resell it because I wouldn't make enough money on it. I'd probably make 10 to 20 pound tops. But Carl Freeman, a long time viewer of the channel, had a Nintendo Switch with me, which I worked on and couldn't fix the board. And he's just gifted that to me in Discord. So I'll leave a screenshot up on the screen just to show you that. He gifted that to me, and I just want to say a big, big thank you, Carl. The actual console is in this envelope, and the issue that was with this switch was basically that every time it tried to connect to Wi-Fi to do the setup, it crashed, and I tried to change the Wi-Fi IC, and I couldn't get it working, so the board is basically a donor board at this point, but it does have pretty much everything with it, so it's got the battery, it's got the game card reader, uh, the SD card reader, the fan, all of that good stuff. It's got it all with it, including the case. So all I need to do really is just switch over the serial number from the switch that I bought onto this case. And we should technically have a working switch. So I'm going to do that now. All right, so ignoring this white stuff here, it's basically dried up isopropyl alcohol. Had a little bit of an isopropyl alcohol spill as usual because... I always do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transplant the motherboard into this case. And again, I want to say a big thank you because this has allowed me to actually resell it as a switch. So there's the old board. I'm going to transplant the board into this one. Okay, so this is inside my test housing right now. So I tried it with a test housing and it didn't give a display. And it turned out, I found out on a stream later that day, that my test housing has failed. So basically... That's the reason I wasn't giving a display. But this is the same motherboard. I can assure you of that. It is the same motherboard. Okay, so that's that's a new test housing I've built. It's still got the sticker on the uh, on the screen just to protect it because if I ever need to use it for anything, then it's always there with a fresh-looking screen. So there should be some charge in this battery because I did charge it up a little bit a couple of days ago to try and fix this board for Carl. So it should have some charge in it. Okay, let's pop a game card reader in. So the game card reader is courtesy of Carl as well. So the original game card reader is obviously not going to be good because it's severely liquid damaged. So I'm not going to be able to reuse that. I might try and fix it, but just not yet. Okay. And there you go. As you can see, it is turning on. We've got the Switch logo. Console battery low, so it is a little bit low. I'd better put that on charge, I guess. Okay, let's test the charge on the other side. Yep, okay, so that should dock as well. All right, so let's have a look. So as you can see, I've already tried a game on it, Pokemon Sword, and it did work, so... Absolutely fine. Just to show you the serial number here. XAJ4002-755164. So that's a serial number from the one I bought. Okay, so let's just try some Joy-Cons. Joy-Con 1 paired. Hmm.
Okay, Joy-Con 2 not working. Right, let's have a look under the microscope at this little area here quickly. Right, okay, do we have an issue with this here? Right. Just making sure that I don't have any breaks in it. Actually, let's just check that continuity on that connection there, because it doesn't look great, does it? I'm wondering if he's got a micro break in it at all. All right, I've just shut it off. Okay, it does have continuity. Okay, we don't have continuity from that middle pin. What's going on with that? What's the deal there? Okay, it looks like we've got some breaks in this, in this middle pin. Let's just check these other ones quickly. No continuity on that pin for definite. Okay, that middle pin needs fixing. Uh, I'm wondering if I can just run a little bit of solder over that, to be honest, just to fix up that trace. So we're getting power to the Joy-Con, but we're not getting any kind of data transmission by the look of it. So yeah, you can visibly see, though, now I've cleaned it, you can visibly see those breaks in that line. Let's just add a tiny bit of flux there because the console is still inside the case. So the board is still in there. I haven't removed it. So let's just see if I can basically fill in the blanks. Nah, it's not going to fill them in. All right, it's micro jumper time. So I've got some 0.1 millimeter wire. Okay, so before I break that, let's just test it. Make sure we've got no shorts, and also make sure that we've got continuity from one side to the pin. So I'll check from here. Okay, and there we go. All right, so hopefully that's all that's wrong with that. But let's just trim the wire. Cool. Clean up. Uh, I could do with just making this joint a tad better. Not really keen on leaving shoddy joints. There we go. Sorry for that there as well. Much better. Let's make sure we still have continuity here. Yep. And let's retest. That's lighting up. I can see it lighting up. Ped. Awesome. There we go. And job done. Both Joy Coins connected. Are the charging? Yes. So that one is dead. Needs charging. It's fine. Uh, but it's working. Oh, that's fantastic. So let me just double. Confirm that the game is going to work. Let's get the nearest game to me. Pokemon Yellow will do. 
And he's charging both sides, so I'm assuming he's going to dock, but I haven't got a dock set up right now. Pokemon Pikachu, there we go. Awesome. So, that's done. Uh, that needs charging, damn it. So, let me just make sure it connects to the interwebs. That's one thing I didn't check. Obviously, if it doesn't dock, then I'll, uh, I'll update, but it should be fine. Ooh. Looks like I've got a bit of stick drift to deal with. That's on my test joy console, don't worry about that. There we go. And good to go. So all I need to do with this is factory reset it. And then I can reset it. Might not factory reset because the battery is dead. Uh, yeah, it will. Okay, there we go. So, ah, maybe not. System updates. Although, well, I'll get the factory reset done anyway. So, yeah, that's it. Um, so, I've got the switch working. Again, big thank you to Carl for donating the housing. Obviously, this board here, which was called, they will go into a donor pile. Um, and I'll use the parts off that and salvage some more stuff off it. But I can resell this now as a complete working switch. I just need to screw it all together. Uh, give it a full test and it's good to go but obviously as you saw there most of the liquid damage was around the lcd area and that worked absolutely fine the one area what didn't work was the joy con but yeah just a broken line which is caused by the liquid damage but now it seems it seems all good i will give it a full test i'll give it a thorough test i'll make sure nothing else is going to fail um, and then hopefully resell it so just to catch up then i've managed to fix a switch uh, unfortunately the Housing for that was not salvageable. I can't really add any parts cost for this because it was gifted to me by um, by Carl. So I can't really add any parts cost for that. But there's nothing in the rules to say that I can't accept gifts. So again, big, big thank you. I really appreciate it. The Xbox, obviously, that's that's gone back. I'm waiting for a refund. The money off that will go back into the kitty when it comes in. Uh, I should get around about 100, £130, £140 for this Switch. Hopefully, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I'll see what they're going for, and hopefully I can resell it. Dogs have just started barking again, which is really annoying. I still have the MacBook, which I'm not going to have time to work on. So I've got that down here. Uh, it seems in fairly good condition. It's apparently liquid damaged. So I'll work on that for the next episode. Um, hopefully I can actually get enough footage for the next episode, given the delay. But that's just how it goes sometimes. The delays are basically something that we can't really help. So hopefully I'm not delayed in releasing the next video. But I do have stuff to work on anyway. So I'll get this all put back together. I'll get the switch listed on Facebook and eBay. Um, and amongst other sites as well. And yeah, we'll take it from there. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I know it's not been the most fun episode. It's been pretty annoying actually. Um, I do still have the controller and stuff which I need to resell. So I also have a... Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention this actually. I also have an Elite Series 2 controller, which I bought off eBay. But unfortunately, when I got it, it's just in way worse condition than I thought. Uh, but then I look back at the pictures and it was all there. I just missed it. So I'm probably going to have to part that out. But I'll show that on the next episode as well. I have received the chips for the Nintendo Switch docks as well. So I can work on those now. So there's a few things I need to work on. a few things I need to sell. And hopefully we can make some money. But that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.